some ample reserves lots of problems with these right now um because they're brand new obviously this year so things are a bit strange that they added more stuff for us to know for the ap exam anyway uh we're gonna do this really quick just so we have a little taste of what's going on here um these are all the tools um, of the fed with ample reserves mostly we're going to be talking about administered interest rates or your interest rate on reserves tend to be how I see the multiple choice questions being asked. Um, they're going to start us out with something like they're going to tell us that we're in a recessionary gap. Then we have to know how to fix that recessionary gap. We can either decrease the administered interest rates, we can decrease the interest rates on reserves, or we could decrease the policy rate. All of these things seem to be tested. Uh, all this policy rate's not tested quite as much, but the AIR and the interest rates on reserves I see more than anything else. Don't worry about the arbitrage stuff on this cheat sheet. Uh, your teacher will either cover that or they won't. I haven't seen any arbitrage questions on any multiple choice questions that I've looked at lately. So let's just kind of blow through this and then we'll sum it all up real quick. In essence, they are going to give you a recession. Um, graph or they'll tell you it's a recession um, and then you have to fix that recession easy enough we're in a recessionary gap we know that we want aggregate demand to fix this recession we want aggregate demand to shift to the right so what we were just easy understanding is we need interest rates to go down that includes that administered interest rate could go down the interest rate on reserves is the way they like to talk about it uh, it would go down, or they could say the policy rate goes down. If any of these three happens, what we understand is nominal interest rates are going to go down. That's going to make investment go up. And this we should understand investment in this situation means people taking taking out loans, <laughs> taking out loans to be able to uh, build capital, factories, equipment, machinery. That's all investment. So. They're going to drive down interest rates, investment goes up, which makes aggregate demand goes up, which makes the price level go up, which makes real GDP go up, output would go up. These two are the same thing, but they test them a lot. Sometimes they say output, sometimes they say real GDP. And we know unemployment would therefore go down. This is probably the main reason why we're using what we call expansionary monetary policy. So... That expansionary monetary policy with ample reserves is a decrease in AIR, a decrease of the interest rates on reserves, or a decrease in the policy rate would cause all of those effects. So we do need to draw it. Uh, that's more of an FRQ thing to recognize. But we would simply, let's see if I can share it this way. So you want to have your supply of reserves vertical. And you want to have it in that flat section of what we call your demand for reserves, right? So that DR is demand for reserves. So you'll have it in that it is ample reserves, right? So it's in that demand for reserves section right there. So you want to initially draw this. Um, that is our demand for reserves. Let's call it one. And then what we know is one of these three things is going to happen. That's going to drive this. It's going to shift down like that. We'll call that DR. Two. We can see that our policy rate has gone from PR1 to PR2, and that makes sense. We could have said that was one of the things that's going on there. Um, policy rate on the vertical, quantity of reserves on the horizontal. I haven't drawn this but 15 or 20 times. You should draw it 15 or 20 or 1,200 times until you've got it in your brain. So this is our ample reserves graph that we have to know. We understand the effects. We kind of went through those. Uh, obviously, if we were in an inflationary gap, we just kind of flip everything around. The FOMC would target a higher federal funds rate. Um, that would probably be more of an FRQ sort of answer there. I haven't seen, I don't think, maybe, I can't think right now. Uh, but to fix that inflationary gap that we have, we want to push aggregate demand back to full employment. To do that, they would increase the AIR, they would increase that interest rates on reserves, or they can increase the policy rate. Again, just a reverse of what we were doing for expansionary monetary policy. Um, and we know all those effects. As soon as they 
increase that AIR, right? We know that that's going to make nominal interest rates go up. When nominal interest rates go up, investment goes down. This is going to make aggregate demand go down, price level go down. It's going to make real GDP and output go down. It's contractionary, right? Uh, those go down and therefore unemployment would go up. We got to know that. They like to ask that question quite a bit. In essence, you'll see something like there's contractionary monetary policy and uh, that administered interest rates go up, what's going to increase? And we know that unemployment would have to increase. So make sure we attack that on and don't leave it off. All right. Same graph. All we're doing is showing, start out with that. Supply of reserves, demand for reserves, quantity of reserves on the horizontal, policy rate on the vertical. And then you want to show that thing sliding up there. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. I would probably do DR1 and DR2. I haven't seen it done like that, but that's probably, we understand that policy rate's going up. Don't leave that off. You need that, right? And this is probably just quantity of reserves one or something like that. Um, show those arrows. Anyway, draw it a lot so you know exactly what it looks for. Let's see if we can tighten this up a little bit in a tight sort of understanding. Uh, they're going to give us what we know as an inflationary gap. They could say something like output is above full employment output. We should know that that means an inflationary gap. They could say unemployment is below the natural rate. That means an inflationary gap. If you can't understand that language, then you're not going to know it's an inflationary gap and you'll do it wrong. So make sure you understand how they're saying those. We know the central bank's going to target a higher federal funds rate. This is an inflationary gap. They want to reduce the price level. So they'll increase the AIR, increase the reserve balances, increase the policy rate. That is contractionary policy. If that AIR goes up, I know the nominal interest rates are going up also, which makes consumption go down, investment go down, aggregate demand, price level, real GDP, and output go down, but unemployment goes up. Make sure you recognize that. Bond prices are just inversely related to interest rates. If interest rates go up, we know bond prices have to go down. Lots of questions about bond prices, but it's a pretty simple uh, relationship there. Obviously, they could tell us it's a recessionary gap. We know that that means output, and I should have had it on here, is below full employment output, right? If output is below full employment, we have less output than we'd like. We're not at full employment. We're in a recessionary gap. Or they could say unemployment is greater than your natural rate of unemployment. If unemployment, if actual unemployment is greater, that implies we have to be in a recession than your natural rate because your natural rate is at that full employment rate. All right, uh, the Fed central bank will target a lower federal funds rate. That means they'll decrease the AIR, decrease interest rates on reserves, decrease the policy rate. One of these three is going to be our answer uh, when they say, how would we get out of a recessionary gap? Those are the three things that we're always looking for. Expansionary policy, monetary policy is what we're causing it. We know that AIR would decrease. Any of these would decrease. We know that's going to drive down the nominal interest rate, which makes consumption go up, investment go up, aggregate demand go up, price level, real GDP, and output goes up, and unemployment goes down. And if interest rates are going down, I have to know bond prices have to be going up. So we should know that. That's a really tight understanding, uh, but you should definitely have that in your head before you walk into any test on this stuff. All right, that was pretty quick. Um, right now, that's best I can do on ample reserves. All right, be safe, take care.